Well, welcome back. As we explore Inspira Technologies, an innovative medical technology company in the life support arena. Joining to discuss this pivotal technology, Joe Han, the president and co-founder here. First and foremost, welcome, sir. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to get you on. So I want to dive into this for newer investors, Joe. Uh, maybe just give us that high level overview, maybe an elevator pitch to exactly what Inspira is doing there. Sure. You know, our goal is to revolutionize the $19 billion mechanical ventilation market. So you may be very familiar with today, if someone has uh, requires life support, has respiratory failure, they end up being placed on a mechanical ventilator, which means they're going to be placed into a coma, they're going to be intubated, intubated having a tube pushed down their throat, and they get put onto the machine for a couple of days, some weeks, while they, doctors try to take care of the underlying medical problem. Now, we know this is a very serious issue because there are about 20 million people that get put on the system every year, and there's about a 50% mortality rate. And yes, we've obviously been, become more familiar with this since COVID when yeah. it blew up on an international level. But this is happening every single year, 20 million people. Now, what we're doing is developing blood, direct blood oxygenation technologies. So in a sense, what does that mean? We're saying, you know, why should we go through the sick lung if the sick lung is damaged? Let's rather go directly into the blood. Let's oxygenate the blood. Let's remove the carbon dioxide from the blood and therefore elevate the patient's oxygen saturation levels while the doctors are taking care of the medical con underlying medical condition. What does that mean in a nutshell? We're targeting for the patient to be awake without intubation. So hopefully a much less invasive medical treatment, a faster turnaround for the patient, and hopefully a lot less medical complications and a better survival rate. Yeah, I definitely appreciate the insight. And if you had to define a mission for Inspire, what exactly would it be? Our mission is to bring much better patient care in the life support sector. Yeah, Whether that's... it's ICU, life support, life-saving technologies, you'll see that everything we're doing is around improving uh, life, uh, let's say patient outcomes in critical care conditions. And I'm more than happy to go into it further on the conversation. Yeah, and I wouldn't mind diving a little bit deeper into some of the technologies. I mean, you have uh, HYLA or HYLA. Do you want to talk about sure. this and what the unique features of this are? Correct. So what is really unique about what we're doing is that we're working about we're working around technologies that are actually performing uh, non-invasive blood tests. So imagine you just think about it. It's a blood sensor that actually clips onto any tube that has blood flowing through it. So it's a very small sensor and it's able to monitor blood flowing through that tube. So in a sense, you're taking blood tests of certain parameters that are relevant to patients that are in critical care. Uh, but you don't actually physically have to take the blood. So by doing that, you can actually monitor the blood all the time. You can identify how the patient is potentially responding to treatments, uh, um, whether they are uh, uh, deteriorating, improving. But, you know, why is this so important, right? Because today when you're in the ICU undergoing operations that are uh, critical, basically there's an ability to take blood tests only every couple of hours. In between things happen, patients deteriorate, nobody really knows about it. But if we can monitor those really key parameters every second, every minute, we can actually monitor, prevent, or alert the, phys the physicians of potential deterioration in patients' condition, and therefore uh, help with potential early intervention. So the fact that the sensor is non-invasive, doesn't actually physically touch the blood, doesn't require physical withdrawals, it means that you have very little limitations in relation to uh, what you have to do today. And again, you don't need manpower you don't need staff in order to collect that information yeah do you want to just simplify a little bit too on exactly what the process of this hyla blood sensor is it just on the right front? so we call it the hyla yeah um so the hyla in a sense you know for example for a patient undergoing open heart surgery for example the patient would be uh, connected to a cardiopulmonary bypass machine in other words open heart lung machine so in this case, they're basically connecting two tubes to the patient through the one tube they are uh, extracting the blood. It's going through a system that's going to remove the carbon dioxide and oxygenate the blood, just like the lungs with the help of the heart would do, in a sense. And then again, it's pumping back that enriched blood back to the patient. Now, if I take the blood sense and I monitor the blood coming out of the patient, okay, whether it's a patient that's going undergoing heart, open heart surgery, or maybe someone who's got... Uh, who's uh, got a damaged lungs, I would be able to monitor the certain uh, parameters that are, are, are in the blood coming out of the patient. Now, by doing that, it gives me an indication how what is the condition of the patient or how they're responding to the treatment. In other words, whether, you know, enriching their blood, they're getting better, they're more stabilized, or do they continue to deteriorate? 
So it actually lets me monitor the patient in real time, gives us a little bit of an insight on the secrets within the blood. But if you actually monitor the blood within a device or coming out of a device that's treating the blood, we can actually potentially identify if that's, that system is being monitored or operated properly. In other words, is the physician actually activating that system properly? Is there, for example, fatigue in the disposables, which are those you know, consumables that are physically touching the blood? Sometimes that happens. And this could indicate on certain problems with those in those areas. So in a sense, it's giving a bird's eye view between how the patient is responding to how the procedure is being uh, um, up, uh, being performed or if there are any technical issues and therefore you can basically uh, learn about things at real time and actually respond at real time optimize potentially the solution or prevent unnecessary uh, deterioration and deterioration means endangering the patient so this is really an important thing it's like having your eyes on, on the medicine at real time knowing what's happening at real time uh, and then, of course, because we designed the product with built-in AI-powered capabilities, you could, in a sense, provide very important data to the phys- to the medical team or to the physicians at real time. And that, in a sense, has high levels of value. No, this is incredible. And I wouldn't mind pivoting a little bit into one of your other major products, uh, the R100. Do you want to talk about yes. what this means for Inspira? Right. So the R100 is what we call our first device that we bring to the market. It's actually designed as an open heart lung machine, like I mentioned. So this kind of device could be used to support patients undergoing uh, surgery. And what it actually does, it's a, this device is able to support partial or full heart lung uh, um, support during a procedure. Um, uh, so just think of it, it's basically an artificial heart and an artificial lung in one. Uh, in, in this type of procedure, the patient obviously, uh, in this case, probably would be in, in a coma, sedated. Uh, they could even be on a mechanical ventilator. It's for a specific uh, medical uh, situations, procedures. And in such a case, what's actually happening here, all the blood in the upper body is being extracted from the patient. It's being treated. In other words, we're taking over the, the procedure of uh, and the uh, function of the heart and the lung based on how the physician has decided to activate the system. And therefore, that enriched blood is being circulated back to the patient. So in a sense, we're keeping the body alive in a sense. We're providing the oxygen to the brain, to the vital organs, while the doctors, the surgeons, or the physicians are doing what they need to do in that procedure. And so that device already has gone through FDA clearance. We've already shipped to the US. We've mentioned that that device is already uh, to be deployed in uh, WMC in New York, uh, a leading hospital in the space. And so Inspira has basically proved to the market that we have both design R&D capabilities, we have uh, uh, FDA regulatory clearance capabilities, in other words, we know how to work through that process and to deploy a product. So I think we're showing, we're giving you kind of a taste of what we can do. And then we see the R100 as being the market opener for the other devices. Because what we plan to do is we're deploying now the R100 We've told the market that we're going to be sharing clinical uh, results, evaluation results around the Hyla blood sensor, the first configuration of it. We've told the market that it will go to FDA submission. And once that comes out, with, when it's cleared, hopefully, we plan to integrate it with the R100. So now the R100 is not only going to be oxygenating and enriching blood, it's also going to be monitoring blood at real time. And then again, as we move forward, you'll see that we also have other products called the Cardiart and the Art, the Inspire Art which are the next generation. They have unique te- additional unique technologies, more advanced capabilities of Hyla, and they have two different purposes in life. The cardiart has an ability, it's been designed to treat patients undergoing cardiac arrest. So imagine somebody collapsing outside, outside a hospital, and you've got to basically give them a CPR, a resuscitation in real time. So you would be able to come hopefully and cannulate the patient. In other words, connect them to the tubes very quickly, keep the body alive, oxygenate the brain, excuse me, oxygenate the brain while the doctors or the physician there is trying to uh, resuscitate the patient and bring them back to life. So this is really critical. And to understand how critical it is, this happens to about 350 million thousand people in the US every year. There's less than a 9% survival rate, okay? And then again, the Inspira Art, I know it's a lot of names, but the Inspira Art, which is the flagship that device is basically accumulation of the different technologies in a sense. It's being designed to prevent the need for mechanical ventilation. And this would basically 
could become the new standard of care. It has the potential to become the new standard of care for millions of patients, millions in the US every year. Hopefully patients that come in with respiratory failure in ICUs will not need to be placed in comas. Hopefully we'll be able to monitor them, enrich their blood, remove the carbon dioxide while they're awake, hopefully a shorter turnaround and change the whole map. And they get rid of those terrible associated complications that occur with mechanical ventilation, which obviously has shown, and we know that they really have a very poor survival, survival rate. Yeah, no, this is absolutely fascinating to say the least. And I wouldn't mind uh, kind of en encapsulating everything you said, simplifying it a little bit and looking at what's going on in 2025. If there's one thing investors should focus on short term, long term here going through the year, what is it? Okay, so we believe that 2025 is the year of the HILA. So if you look at the uh, at, at what we've shared with the market, we've told the market that we uh, plan to share results. Uh, uh, first evaluation clinical results on the Hyla blood sensor. We've shared results in the past at the end of 23, great results, great response. And uh, we plan to do that in the, in, in the coming future. So this is something that of course, uh, investors, people who know the company would probably be on the lookout for. We've also told the market that we plan to, so once we uh, go through that process, we plan to submit the product to, F, to the FDA for clearance. So I think that's another very important catalyst. And, you know, based on our capabilities with R100, within nine months, we were able to get our first product uh, approved. So let's hope that this will be a smooth ride. So that's that, that's really good news around the Hyla. The company has the R100 in the market. It's growing. It's going to deploy it. We've told the market as well that we're also sending disposables, which are the consumables that you would sell with the device, uh, uh, through FDA clearance through 25 and 26. In other words, Inspira not, does not only have a product in the market, it's now working on the razor blade model as an add-on on that product in order to create revenue stream uh, on consumables. And I think that's really very key for a company. So in a sense, you can see that the company is very focused on high lab bringing a, a next generation blood sensor to the market, penetrating and proving itself with the R100 and creating that pipeline. And by the end of 26, which I know is a little bit away, we already plan to, to submit the cardio art the first version of the art version to the FDA. So we have two years of lots and lots of new flow, a lot in 25, a lot of products going in and out of FDA submissions to clearance, hopefully uh, between 25 and 26. We're very busy, we're very focused, and we really plan to revamp uh, and reshape the medical landscape in these market segments. Yeah. And just to uh, kind of finish up here, you mentioned revenue. Do you want to talk about the path to revenue and just kind of uh, getting these products to market? Yeah, so the path to revenue, look, we believe that the holy grail or the big market is actually the Inspirat and the Cardiart. They have multi-billion dollar markets, massive, well, very, very big markets for a medical device. So we're using the R100, to do, we, the Gulf Art 100, as we've said in presentations, is to use it to deploy in leading hospitals, to get that, to get the, the, the Inspirat technology and brand out there, get, uh, create those leading centers, uh, and then on that, you know, bring in the high layer, the disposables, and then ramp up into the heavy hitters. So basically the R100, its job is to penetrate adoption and early usage so that we can bring in devices that have a much larger patient population. That's the difference. The more we go north, if I may call it, the, the more the, the patient population grows. The high layer could have uh, uh, a million, two million patients potentially a year. The cardiac art worldwide, it's up to 4 million, obviously, uh, and the, car, uh, the, the cardiac art, sorry, and the art could be up to 20 million. So the more we make progress, the larger the market grows, the better the adoption, the more, the, the more potential to become a very, very strong and significant pioneering company in the space. On that note, uh, is there anything else you'd like to discuss anywhere investors should go to learn more? Well, investors are welcome to join our, uh, our website. At Inspira Technologies, there is a very, very well-informed uh, website. Uh, you can also see uh, there's an investor relations page. There's news and events. There's a lot of information about the different products, a lot of detail. Uh, and of course, there's always the opportunity to reach out to the company. We are very responsive uh, to, um, to, to folks that actually reach out with questions uh, and even to talk with the company. On that note, uh, we'll pass it off to the viewers. Uh, we'll leave the links in the description below and uh, consider subscribing for future updates. But on that, we look forward to catching you in the next one. Thank you very much.